talk to you about five minutes about anger management an extremely important aspect for the youngsters the teenagers the youth and perhaps we can take it to the next level and share it to the elders and others and beyond just the Muslims towards the entire humanity anger is something that is natural if somebody doesn't get angry I ask you to please go to a doctor and get yourself checked if somebody says I don't get angry that is wrong if you're angry, then try to find the reason. Try to understand that anger is natural. But how are you going to control your anger? There are two ways to control anger. There is an Islamic way and there is a non-Islamic way. Islamically speaking, the minute you get angry, what did Prophet Muhammad teach us? And we keep referring from the Quran and Sunnah. Why? Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ The best example we find is in Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Therefore, we have to go back to Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and try to understand how his life was. What happened? Day in and day out, can you answer this simple question? You want to go and pray salah. Has there been a single moment in your life that somebody has put thorns in your way when you're going to the masjid? Has someone put something bad, rubbish, garbage in your way when you're going to the masjid? None of that has happened. But if somebody just passes up very quickly and they drive very quickly, all of a sudden <clears throat> we get upset. You know the reason is we have not trained ourselves enough. Every single day Prophet Muhammad used to face that situation. And that day when that individual did not come, and there was no garbage, the road was clean and tidy, he got concerned. He says, where is this person? He inquires, asks, where is this individual? Finds out that person has fallen sick. Tries to go and visit this person. Now imagine the state, the psychological state that this person goes through. I have been evil to this person. I've been so bad to this person. And all of a sudden, not seeing me there, the prophet of that particular time, Waqtul Rasul, he himself comes and asks about my health, Allahu Akbar. That very instant, that individual says, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Indeed, I testified that there is no God worthy of worship and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you are the last and final messenger. And that is the testimony of the best character. No wonder when Aisha radiallahu anha was asked, what was his character? The answer was, that he was the talking and living Quran. He was everything that the Quran talks about. So it's very easy for us to learn how to recite Quran nicely. We can recite the Quran in the best tone. It's very easy for us to read the translations. But brothers and sisters, it is a task. It is a challenge for us to implement the teachings, to understand how we can implement them in our life. If we can do that, then that is the place where we can feel that we are walking towards success. Imagine the confidence we will have that now we are really, really proud that we have started to understand the message of Quran, the message of Islam, and how we can propagate, how we can convince other people. Let me give you an example. If you are going to invest all your life in just one subject, for, for example, mathematics, the academic year is for 365 days, let's say 12 months or whatever it is. For the entire year, you are studying only mathematics or only science. Do you think that you'll succeed? Absolutely not. You have to make sure simultaneously you study math, you study physics, you study chemistry, whatever your subject requirements are, depending on your age level. Similarly, as a Muslim, as a mu'min, it is important for us to understand and try to learn every single branch of Islam simultaneously. You understand the Quran, then the next level is try to make sure you implement one small thing at a time. 
The next step is whatever you have learned, try to teach it to others. Teach it to other people. Whoever is here, alhamdulillah, whoever is not there, try to teach it to them. And teaching has to be done in the best possible way. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught him the book and he has taught us the best way that we should invite people. Inviting with goodness, inviting with smile, inviting with happiness. If we ourselves are dissatisfied, if you are angry, if we are upset, look at our states in different parts of the world. Doesn't matter which background we come from. There are issues at home, there are issues within the family, there are issues within your work environment, there are issues within your school environment, so many issues. But the minute you turn yourself five times a day, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, forget everything, it is time now for your salah. Come towards me, come towards success and try to understand that this dunya is fani, it will finish. Everything will finish in this world. But remember that there is something that is everlasting and that is the akhirah. That is how you start feeling good. And furthermore it says, Try to go to the next level. If the person is persisting that, no, I'm not going to listen to your advice. Who are you? It happens. Person say, I don't want to listen to you. I said, you are my Muslim brother. The person responds, no, I'm not a Muslim. What are you going to do? Still you smile. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And then you respond back from the knowledge of Qur'an, not from yourself. That is how your character should be like an amazing individual walking on this earth with Qur'an speaking for itself. That Qur'an says that if you meet somebody, uh, someone, an individual who is going to treat you with jahal, with jahala, what you have to do? Respond to him saying, May the peace be on you. What an amazing dua. And that person will think, will reflect, and immediately his anger will subside. The anger will go down. And you are in control. Remember, when you start your home, you have to make sure that you are always in control. Many people may say, oh, I listen to the radio, I do this, I do that. But if you are reciting yourself, you are involved actively not in a way where the radio is doing something or the CD is doing something. No, you yourself do it, then you are completely in control. You do the azkar of the whole day and you're reciting portions of the Quran. Any type of mishap that happens, any type of situation that comes, you're still under control and it takes time. It's not easy, but I can definitely tell you by passage of time, you'll start building that particular characteristic within your character. Also try to assess what other features should I improve. I get upset very quickly. Why? Because I don't get food on time. Because I don't get a chance to go to bed quickly. I don't get probably a raise in my uh, work. I don't get a chance to get good marks in school. Whatever the reason, Ruju Allah, return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Call me and I'll answer you. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ We have every single thing in the Qur'an if and only if we try to refer to the Qur'an. What have we done? We have only invested time in learning how to recite the Qur'an and over there we are still not successful. Many a times when somebody is asked to recite, they say, oh no, I don't have a good voice, my throat is not feeling well, I don't have the, you know, energy today, whatever. Too many excuses. And who is giving you those excuses? The shaitan. When we are speaking, when we are talking, we have a wonderful voice. Nobody says, oh, you have a terrible voice. However, when it comes to the point where you have to recite, you don't want to recite. Moving on, the next step. Alhamdulillah, we may read one tafsir, we may read two tafsir, and then we may read translation after translation. However, until and unless you try to understand the Quran word for word, understand its actual meaning by understanding the Arabic language, only then you can dive into the depths of the Quran. Imagine you're driving by a beautiful seaside and a seaside is something that is attractive to anybody and it's amazing sight. A person doesn't know how to swim. You're driving by and you feel relaxed, you feel happy. The minute you stop yourself 
and try to go closer towards the water, you feel furthermore satisfied. And if you can swim and go and feel the water, again you feel satisfied. Similarly is the situation with the connection of Quran. If you are listening to the recitation of Quran, you feel very happy, you feel satisfied. But imagine if you yourself recite the Quran nicely, not only do you get satisfaction, but also you start getting ajr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that is not where you have to stop. That is not where you should say that I've done my job, that's my mission. No. The second step after that is what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about? And Allah tells us once we understand the different topics, coming back to our important topic, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrajit linnas, that you are the best nation evolved for mankind. No wonder a person who has the best character. And he should and she should have the best character. It doesn't matter who and what and how, whatever situation they come under. They are never upset. Upset is okay, but you know how to control it. You know how to maneuver it. You know how to cushion it. Once you go home, perhaps close your room and give a few punches and scream and scream as loudly as possible and vent out your heat but not in front of people. You have to train yourself. This is how you can get complete control of anger. Many people say, oh, you know, these people belonging this, to this particular religion really get very short-tempered quickly. Let's show to the world that we are a peaceful nation. We are a nation where we can spread peace, satisfaction, happiness, and success, not just in this dunya, but the world after this world, which is the Akhirah.